We're here in the studio today with our studio assistant and we are doing a video tutorial on how to host your own paint and sip party. This can be for kids, adults, any beginner or even people that have painted before, have painted a long time ago or have never picked up a paintbrush. So it's for everyone. This is just my method. There are many, many ways to do this out there, um, but I've been teaching for a long time here in Hawaii and this has been the best way to send people home with something that they really like. <laughs> okay, so first of all, we have our supplies list. These are the things you're gonna to need to have to purchase or even borrow. You might know a lot of artists, um, and if you even know one, just ask them, because we have so many supplies that we don't use and can loan out, so definitely put the word out if you need any of these things. There are many artists that have them and are willing to loan them to you. So your first thing is your canvas. Your canvas can be a canvas like this, which is a cardboard backed canvas. Now it's nice and firm and stiff, so that's helpful when you're painting. Um, it's not too expensive. Um, it's also easy to frame. You can just pop it into any frame that's a standard size and you're good to go. You can use um, canvas paper, which is very inexpensive and wonderful. You can get um, a booklet of a bunch and maybe take care of your entire class. The only thing is you would have to have some sort of hardback um, behind your paper surface because it's flimsy. Um, then your other option is also a stretched canvas or wood framed canvas with the canvas wrapped around. Those are more expensive, but they are higher value. Um, they can also be upcycled. So if you end up having a painting that you're not particularly enjoying, you can always upcycle and paint over that canvas. Today we will be using acrylics and acrylics are wonderful for being able to reuse um, your surfaces. So first, discover what surface you'd like. Even cardboard can be used, especially for acrylic. It's a wonderful medium. Now next is your, pa your paper plate or your palette. This doesn't have to be one of those special palettes with the hole in the middle for your thumb, um, although those are fabulous. So if you do end up continuing your painting uh, experience, definitely get one of those, they're wonderful. I just use paper plates in my classes. They're disposable, they're easy cleanup, and you sometimes you can go through more than one if you have a lot of color mixing going on, so you might need more than one. You can use a ceramic plate if you'd like something that's recyclable. You can use a, uh, a piece of plexiglass, a piece of glass. Anything that has a non-porous surface is a wonderful um, area to, to put your paints on. Something inexpensive, of course. Next is your acrylic paints. For this tutorial, we're using acrylics. They're very forgiving, they dry quickly, they're easy cleanup, it's just a water medium, it's how you're gonna rinse, clean your brushes and thin out your mediums of acrylic. They're inexpensive, which I really enjoy. So if you're buying for a, a large class and you need quite a bit of paint, you're not you know, breaking the bank. So in my classes, we try to stick with the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and white. Now, not all classes do that. Some classes um, prefer that you have your every color, your greens and your purples and your oranges and all those, those secondary colors as well as your tertiary colors. Now, I love to teach you guys how to make those secondary colors and tertiary colors, but feel free to have the entire spread of colors in front of you if that's what you would like. But we will learn color mixing theory in this class. So the most important ones are red, yellow, and blue, and white. Now there are different types of reds, different types of blues, and different types of yellows. So for today, um, we are just using a cadmium yellow, an ultramarine blue, um, any sort of brilliant red or cadmium red, um, and white. They also can come in these big jars, and this is kind of like in the kiddo section at a craft store, um, large amounts, and they will also tell you what kind of red they are, um, a cobalt blue versus a, an ultramarine blue. Um, an alizarin red versus uh, an orange red. So they will, they'll help you out with that. Now other colors that you might need, depending on what reference material you choose and what paint, painting you'd like to be painting. Ochre yellow is wonderful. It's a neutralized yellow. Great for shrubbery and landscapes. Turquoise. <laughs> turquoise is so hard to make. We deal a lot in turquoise here because we're in Hawaii, so people like to paint seascapes and island scenes and water and stuff. So this 
is invaluable if you're going to be painting any sort of seascape. Just purchase the turquoise. Um, a black. Now in my classes, we will use an alizarin uh, crimson, which is a deep red, a blue red, in fact, that will be mixed with a ultramarine blue, which is a red blue. And that will make us our darkest, darkest purple, which we can use as black and is a far more interesting color than just plain black. But sometimes you want black, so this can be helpful. Burnt Sienna is another wonderful color. It's a red brown. A lot of people will use this in their skin tones, um, but I'll teach you how to make skin tones uh, in another video just with the primary colors in all shades. We'll, we'll do the Maybelline skin chart. And then greens. Different greens require different blues and different yellows. So sometimes you might just want to purchase the green that you enjoy. Um, you can go through a lot of color mixing and just not get it right. Or sometimes you get it right on the first try. So don't be afraid to purchase these colors if, if these are the ones you have fallen in love with. There's more than just this, but this is kind of a good start. Brushes. Now, the brushes come in packs like this. So you can have every type, you know, a, a large um, square tip and then small rounds. And the it's a cat tongue is the long de which is my favorite brush. But you can have all variations. Um, in my classes, I'll have just a tub of brushes like this, and students can come and pick whichever one they like. Now, larger areas need larger brushes. Smaller areas will need smaller brushes. So to start, you only need about four brushes. Three, mostly. You need a large brush, and this can be a large flat. Now this is just to usually cover in a background or a large area where you're not doing a lot of color mixing and color changes. Um, you're just getting paint down covering the canvas. This one is one of my favorites, the Long de Chat. It's a cat tongue. Um, and this is great for applying paint in every, in every manner. Um, it can be used on its broad side or on its narrow side. So it has many, many functions. You can also have a flat that's smaller so this one is a little smaller than this big one, and they can cover different types of areas. Also, a small round. Now, rounds are great because you can have these for every um, area that you have smaller details. They come to a point, if you press very firmly, they become broad. If you do a light touch, they're very thin. So um, these would basically be the three brushes I would give any beginning student. So large, medium. Um, the main thing is that to remember is, like I said, large areas, larger brush, smaller areas, smaller brush. On a paint and sip party, we try to continue um, painting the entire three hours and have a completed piece at the end. And there is a lot of time of getting up and getting new paint and talking and seeing your neighbor and um, making sure that you're stepping, stepping back from your work and taking a look at it. So it's not like, you know, three hours of, of hardcore work, but um, you will become very focused and, and very intent on what you're doing. Okay, so continuing on, a water container. Now I just use like um, old um, yogurt containers uh, or mason jars or anything recycled. I mean, they're going to get paint all over them. They, they are dirty, so just, it doesn't matter. Any kind of container that you can find. Even cups are fine, too. Um, you're going to need paper towels, um, usually three to start, so you have a nice um, area for wiping your brush. Um, an apron, sometimes. People know if they're messy or not, so sometimes they just show up with what they need. Um, just, you know, not wearing your nicest clothing is usually fun, but it's such a, it's such a small canvas that we're usually working on. It's like an 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 or 12 by 16, so it's nothing huge. You don't need a drop cloth. Um, so usually we're not that messy. You're not getting things all over you. Um, rags, in case you want to use uh, something recyclable instead of your paper towels. Um, also, the last thing you're going to need is your, well, not the last thing. You are going to need wine. <laughs> wine or beer, Prosecco, uh, Pellegrino, your favorite beverage, um, is very important. Uh, but you also need your reference material. So what is it that you would like to paint? In my classes, we are able to, I keep them rather small from 8 to 15 about there, and everyone's able to bring their own piece. So whether they want to paint their latest grandchild or their um, pet, <laughs> um, their cockatoo, whatever. Um, they just need to bring in an 8x10 photo. And so you can do this for your class as well. 
the method that I'm going to teach you, you don't all have to be painting the same thing, which is very common in paint and sip classes, but not everyone wants an orange butterfly and a blue background. So if you do um, offer that to your students or your participants or girlfriends or whoever's coming to this class, um, they can bring their own, just have them printed out color in an eight by 10 uh, computer paper. Um, that reference material, I would really recommend keep it simple. If it's a vase of flowers, keep it free flowers. You can always add more in later if you want. Um, try and keep it simple. If it's a picture of a person, try to keep it just one figure, maybe not so much on a face, but like a, a just a body, a figure, maybe in the distance. Um, I will have classes on how to paint the face and, um, and continuing on with uh, the challenges of the figure. <laughs> uh, but for the for anyone's first class, you want to make sure they stay really simple because they just need to have fun. You just need to have a painting that they go home with, that they enjoy, that's not too challenging and not too frustrating. We don't want anyone to get frustrated. This is for fun. Okay, so um, I think that's it. Oh, some tape sometimes is handy. Uh, if you're outdoors or even, you know, in a anywhere with fans, keep, have some painter's tape with you to tape your reference material down on your tables. Um, pencil. We're going to need a pencil. Um, okay, so I think that's it. Okay, I'll see you guys at the next video. Go grab your favorite beverage, and I'll see you then.